Hey guys, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. This video is going to be focused on demystifying the wonder that is the FV-201, aka the A45. Recently on the North American server, there has been the Freedom to Play month, in which, if you invested quite a lot of time into the game, that you could pick up this Tier 7 British Heavy Premium tank. Now, as of yet, there's no indication whether the A45 will arrive on the European server. I was lucky enough to have a go with one at Tankfest, and this video is going to let you everything that you need to know about the A45. If you're on the North American server, how you can take them out effectively on the battlefield. And if you're on the European server, what we're missing out on, or hopefully what we might have to look forward to. So firstly, I'm going to run down how the North American server could get this Tier 7 British Premium Heavy Tank. Throughout every day in July, if you manage to get yourself 15,000 experience points, then you would be given Golden Keys, which were more appropriately coined the Freedom to Play Keys. Depending on the day you chose to get that 15,000 experience, you would get a different number of keys. So if you did it on Canada Day on the 1st of July, you would have got four keys. And if you had done it on Independence Day, you would have got four keys. But if you had done it on any one of these Monday to Friday, apart from on special days such as Argentinian Independence Day, you would have likely got only one or towards the end of the month, two keys. If you managed to collect 45 of these keys, you were allowed to rent the FV-201 A45 for eight days and were also given a vertical stabilizer Mark II, which will cost you about half a million credits in game. Now, that wasn't the only reward. As you went along, you managed to get little boosts, so to say, as you picked up um, certain milestones of your freedom to play keys. For the first one, you got two days of premium. For the tenth one, you got 16 slots in your barracks. That's a pretty good reward. And then towards the end, if you got 40 keys, you got a T1 E6, which is a nice reward as it was the, the New Year's gift tank two and a half years ago now. Once you had rented the FV-201, then began a monster quest. You had to earn 200,000 experience and destroy 200 enemy vehicles over any number of games to enable yourself to keep the FV-201 A45 forever. Now, when you think about it, that's a lot of games. If you're a good player, that's 200 games, even with a premium account. And I believe that you only rented this tank for eight days. Yes, there it is. So being able to play 200 games in eight days, that's a lot of dedication to World of Tanks to be able to pick up this tier seven. But of course, if you didn't have time to do that, then you could have invested your money instead to skip through all the grinding. You could buy 45 keys for $45. Or alternatively, you could skip through the 200,000 experience and 200 kills that you had to grind for $15. All in all, I think this was a fantastic event for the North American server. For the keen World of Tanks player, this was an opportunity for you to pick up a very novel tank for free. Or for a player who maybe can play a little bit throughout the month, but doesn't have the time to do that gigantic 200,000 experience grind towards the end of it, you could pick up a Tier 7 premium tank for $15, and that's a really good deal. With some great boosts along the way, including very unique tanks, that I think it's dubious whether Wargaming gives out those New Year gifts tanks now kind of devalues them a little bit for the long-term players and i truly hope that wargaming europe designs something like this for us it'll be a lot of fun to play through but now on to the tank preview what is the fe201 and how can you take them out effectively on the battlefield well basically the fe201 combines the turret of the carnarvon with a hull that performs a very similar to the carnarvon but just has a weaker upper front plate with the gun of the black prince so here we have the A45 on the left, the Black Prince in the middle, and the Carnarvon on the right for comparison. They all have very similar hit points, which is remarkable considering that this is a tier 8 heavy. That is a good slab of hit points for a tier 7 heavy. 250 hit points more than the T29, for example. The tank is a lot faster than the Black Prince, which is a horribly slow tank for tier 7, but not quite as fast as the Carnarvon unless we look at the reverse speed, which is 16 kilometers an hour. And believe it or not, being able to go backwards faster is sometimes very useful on ridge lines where this tank wants to be. Interestingly, this vehicle does have a radio operator, which can be very frustrating for players that do not have a Black Prince, as the Carnarvon, as well as the Conqueror and the FV215B, do not have radio operators. So when you move your British heavy tank crew into the A45, you're going to have to be using your Black Prince radio operator. Now, as we can see here, the turret armor is the same on the A45 as the Carnarvon, both with regards to the front, the side, and the rear. And as we can see here, this is the A45, and I'll just quickly show you the Carnarvon as well. 
the turret is very, very similar indeed. One thing the A45 has going for it is a very meaty engine. It gets 800 horsepower, which is better than the Carnarvon by 50 horsepower and much better than the Black Prince, giving it a better horsepower to ton ratio. And it's also got better traverse speed as well. Although its ground resistances on hard and medium terrain are slightly worse than the Carnarvon, but it's better on soft terrain. The view range is slightly better than the Black Prince, but just a little bit worse than the Carnarvon, but 400 meters view range certainly is excellent for a tier eight heavy. Now onto the gun. For a tier 7 heavy tank, this does get rather low alpha damage of 150 with its standard rounds. And its penetration is also rather lacking 171mm with its standard AP penetration. When we compare that, for example, to the T29, the T29 gets nearly 200mm of penetration. But everyone knows how balanced that tank is. Luckily, if you are willing to fire some premium rounds, it does go up to 239. And when I played through my Black Prince, I certainly needed quite a lot of those to be competitive. And I think that you will as well at tier 7. One thing that is certainly surprising about this gun is that it gets a vast rate of fire increase over the Black Prince. Its DPM has gone up by over 15%. But unfortunately, its accuracy has suffered because of that. 0.39 accuracy is not very British at all. And struggles compared to the Black Prince and pales compared to the Carnarvon. And the aim time is 2.3 seconds, which is comparable, but much worse than the Carnarvon. And so if you're an A45 player, you really want to get this thing hull down because frontally its turret armor is awesome. You can use the 10 degrees of gun depression on this tank to make your upper turret arm a ricochet as well as most of the front upwards from about 150 to some very thick parts of 400 millimeters and even your cheeks at an angle like this range between 170 and 250. But alas the FV201 has a terrible hull armor even angled like this. You can go through it with pretty much every tank that's going to meet it apart from some tier 5s. You only need 130 millimeters of penetration to get through an angled upper plate on this tank and 130 millimeters of penetration to get through the lower plate. And if you over angle the side armor, then you only need 150 up to 200 to get through the side. So if you're tanking in the FV201, you do want to expose your side armor and just hope that they don't hit the upper bar here and try and get through your spaced armor as it will range from about 150 up to 200, which is rather nice. And we can see that even your frontal armor angled as at an extreme nature like this is still only 150. So my top tip for you engaging this vehicle is to shoot it in the hull armor, irrelevant of the angle that you have. You're probably going to be able to get through it. And if they over exaggerate their side armor like this, shoot above the spaced armor in the gigantic butt that this tank has sticking up. One feature that's also interesting on the A45 is this machine gun that sticks up here. This is unique. If we look at the Carnarvon here, it does not have a machine gun and if we take a look at the armor thickness it's not modeled there however if we look at the a45 we can clearly see that it is a model and this will allow you a good opportunity to be able to take out this tank with pretty much every gun that it's going to be able to meet this makes it very frustrating for a45 drivers to come around the corner i presume because not only do you have a gigantic big front of your tank which is very thinly armored coming around but also this machine gun port that will stick up over rocks so that's quite enough theory crafting. Let's take a look to see how it performs in some gameplay. Let's get this show on the road. And so here we go. What better way to preview the FV201 than having, gosh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 FV201s in the same game. Oh my word. An OMG a dog. Thank you so much for sending me this replay from the North American server. Obviously, as these things are not available on the European server yet, we hope. So, oh my god, a dog is playing. And that name is just cracking me up already. I can't say that seriously. Oh my god, a dog is playing on Fiery Salient, a.k.a. Prokhorovka. He's making his way towards the center of the map. And this is the best position probably to take this tank. I'd also like to take this tank over towards this F0 area. If you manage to get here and get hold down, you could put some good shots down onto this location also to poke the top of the, uh, the hill. And so let's put this 17 pounder to work, this 76.2 millimeter. So remember with the standard rounds, it's got 171 millimeters of penetration. And oh my god, a dog has decided that he already wants to fire the APCR rounds of this tank with 239 millimeters of penetration. 
However, he's not having much luck trying to penetrate the turret of the A45. Well, he proved me wrong there, putting one straight through it. Now, I feel like if he was firing his standard rounds at the A45, the, the penetration would probably struggle to go through the turret. And even the APCR rounds here uh, are maybe only going through half, if not less, of the time. He got hit in the side by the KV-3, who uh, it could be up on the hill. He could be anywhere right now. And unfortunately, the accuracy there, that 0.39 accuracy of the A45, doesn't seem to be doing him too well now. But for all intents and purposes, in this kind of a position, the A45 kind of plays a lot as if it was a Carnarvon or even a Centurion. And it's quite nice by the looks of it to have that speed going backwards. So the enemy team has also taken the hill. And now, oh my god, a dog is trying to put some pressure up on it. I would absolutely love to be in this game. I'm so disappointed that I haven't had a, a hilarious game like this. It would have been fantastic. This reminds me of the, the TOG games which I was organizing. We had 20 togs in a single game. So the first round of the Sega... The uh, Sega? The Sega 2? The Sega 2? Please, please, Sega, make another console. I, I, I miss it. I want to see a Dreamcast 2. Please, make it happen. No. The Tiger 2. The first round bounced. The second round went in. And that shows you what 171 millimeters of penetration at this kind of range can do. Luckily, the Tiger P has a very nasty cupola. Enabling him to go right through it, and this 0.39 accuracy really is showing up there with the miss on the T29. But the second round goes right through the side of the Tiger 2's turret. And another one. Great shooting there. That one misses, though. But this tank has plenty of ammo it can afford to fling around its rounds. This replay really does show you the kind of gun performance that you're going to get with 0.39 accuracy. And when your rate of fire is as high as this, it can be a mixed blessing at long range. Either everything can go well or, or not at all. He really needs to start jamming in the rounds on the hull armor of the A45 there, and there we go. This is going to butter the armor of the A45. So of the rounds that he has taken, we can see that about half of them have penetrated at this kind of range from the A45. Generally, probably the ones that have hit his frontal hull armor. And oh my god, a dog has found a really nice position here to sneak in some rounds. Getting good protection from this railway here. And he is annihilating the side of these vehicles now. In an awesome position. And he can really go to town. He's already up to 2,000 damage within four and a half minutes of this game. And the enemy are being very aggressive indeed. Now he's going to start attacking a, a KV-3. He's got to watch out because every time he turns his turret to the side, he runs a risk of being penetrated from the hill. But we can just see what the FB's gun is capable of, at least versus an FB. Four rounds in, 592 damage. Make that 729. He is picking him apart, and that's because he can shoot his hull armor, and the A45 can only shoot his turret. Remember that this is uh, this is the equivalent of a Carnarvon's turret. 1,342 damage there, showing off the rate of fire of the A45. If you can manage to penetrate the enemy tank, you really can do a significant amount of damage to them. He loads some APCR rounds, and ironically it bounces when the original AP round went in. And the reason why he's murdering his opponents here is because he's using that Carnarvon turret. And remember that Carnarvon turret is, is pretty competitive for tier 8. And to take that turret and put it into a tier 7 matchup like this... ...can be very effective indeed. And I just realized that that Tiger 2 was the only tier 8 tank on the enemy team. Gosh, I would love to be playing that Tiger 2 as well. As well as my Sega Dreamcast 2. <laughs> Puts in one more round and we can see just how bad the hull armor is on the A45. One in. Two in. And he has done an insane amount of damage here for this tank. 4,800. 
4,900 nearly, and his fourth kill. He is defending the cap circle like a total boss. Now he moves in. Maybe he can pick up the other kill on that A45. Didn't quite see how much health he had left. Oh, he's on half health. One into his hull. Two. Can he finish him off? There you go. There's the third. Great job there. Oh, my God. A dog. Now, possibly, can he get the top gun on this T-29? One into the side. Oh, come on. A little bit too much lead there, considering the T-29 stopped. I'm hoping for you. Oh, absolute disaster at the end of the game as his top gun was stolen away from him. So a fantastic round here for Oh My God, A Dog in his A45. This replay really did show off the weaknesses of the A45, at least with regards to the hull armor on the enemy team that he was shooting and the strengths of the A45, i.e. this fantastic turret. Having the Carnarvon turret at tier 7 is truly monstrous. And the wild and brutal 17-pounder, when it works, it can really pick apart its enemies very quickly indeed. I noticed that with the Black Prince, when you're able to penetrate, it's very decent. And taking that to the extreme of having an extra 15% DPM makes the A45 a monster in a good matchup on a ridgeline. Let's just take a very quick look at the post-game stats to see the credit-making potential of the A45. So what a huge result here. Oh my god, a dog was able to pick up 151,000 credits, including resupplying his pudding and also the APCR that he fired. He made 61,000 credits profit. Getting a Delanglades medal, that's a very rare one for destroying at least four enemy vehicles while they're attempting to capture a base, a steel wall, and unsurprisingly the high caliber and a Confederate medal for his 5,780 damage. He fired 62 shots this game, hitting 53 and 40 of those penetrated. Those are, are fairly typical of the performance that I would expect to get from that 17 pounder gun when you do combine in a few APCR rounds as well. There's a few things that we should consider in this replay before we think, oh my word, the A45 is incredible. Even though, oh my God, was able to get 2,225 base experience points and then he also gets a bonus 667 because this is a premium vehicle. This was a fantastic situation for the FV201. He managed to get hull down and stay hull down and had enemies exposing all of their side armor to him. Then they ventured into the cap circle and exposed the sides of their turrets to him. A complete dream game for a very novel tank that doesn't have preferential matchmaking. This vehicle can meet tier 9s as far as I'm aware. And when you do meet those tier 9 tanks, your turret isn't so special. You better hide your paper-thin hull armor and hope that you can spam APCR rounds to be able to get through their front. Because 171 millimeters of penetration isn't really going to cut it against most tier 9 vehicles. Nevertheless, the A45 FV201 is a very unique tank. And I would like an opportunity to be able to pick one up on the European server at least. I can imagine they're quite fun in a very good matchup, especially against tier 5s and tier 6s of which we didn't see any in this game. And I bet you a platoon of these with their insane DPM could pick apart the enemy team very quickly indeed, if they were organized. And going hull down in this machine in a good matchup with 10 degrees of gun depression would be absolutely delicious. Do I think this was worth all the effort? Well, at least you've got a unique tank by the end of it. But I'd probably still rather play something like a T29 at tier 7. If I wanted to have a premium tank, then I would play a tier 8 heavy, which would probably make more credits quicker. Nevertheless, this video was set to demystify the A45, trying to give all of you North American players out there some tips on how to take out these beasts and to give the European server a bit of a heads up whether it's worth investing a lot of time or a lot of money to be able to pick one of these up. So anyway guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider giving it a like down below. It really helps the channel out. And thank you so much to Oh My God A Dog for submitting this replay, which was so useful to see the capabilities of this tank. Thank you so much. And let me know in the comments down below what you think about the A45. Are you an owner of one? Was it worth the money that you invested or all the effort that you went to? Are you a European server and you're annoyed that you haven't got the opportunity to get one of these vehicles? And having seen it in the gameplay now, do you think it will be worth the hassle? And guys, just to remind you again, I am going to be live streaming every day during Gamescom next week. 
So come along on twitch.tv forward slash quickie baby and I'm giving away tons of prizes every single day. As well as interviews with top wargaming employees, stage shows and of course my regular gameplay. So hopefully I'll see as many of you as possible on the stream. It'll really matter to me guys. Thank you so much for supporting it. And thanks for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.